For years, Oumuamua baffled the world by speeding up as it left our solar system. But the story unfolding right now is even stranger. The object at the heart of 3i slash Atlas isn't accelerating, it's slowing down. Global observatories caught 3i slash Atlas decelerating by nearly 0.3 kilometers per second over just three days, something every known law of comet physics says is impossible. If this object is really tapping the brakes, either we're missing an entirely new force of nature, or we're witnessing the first evidence of non-human technology in deep space. What could possibly make an interstellar visitor behave like this, and what will happen as it closes in on the sun? Let me paint you a picture that might make you pause. In October 2017, astronomers scanning the night sky caught sight of something that didn't belong. It was later named Kwan Ai slash Oumuamua, the first confirmed interstellar object to sweep through our solar system. Imagine a shape unlike any comet or asteroid we'd cataloged, elongated, spinning end over end, reflecting sunlight with an almost unnatural brightness. For 11 fleeting days, telescopes raced to capture every possible detail. But here's what really captured the imagination. As Oumuamua raced away from the sun, careful tracking revealed it was speeding up, just slightly, but enough to defy gravity's script. No jets of gas, no visible outgassing, nothing to explain the push. The scientific world split. Most astronomers lean toward natural causes, proposing everything from invisible ice evaporating to solar radiation pressure nudging the object along, but the numbers never fully matched. Avi Loeb, a Harvard astrophysicist, went further. He suggested the acceleration could be the signature of a light sail, a thin, engineered sheet using sunlight to propel itself across interstellar distances. The debate became a proving ground for how we judge evidence of technology versus nature. What counts as extraordinary proof? For many, the lack of direct signs, no radio signals, no repeating pattern, no engineered features, meant caution ruled the day. Oumuamua left as quickly as it arrived, leaving only questions in its wake. The lesson was clear. Without multi-instrument confirmation, without a smoking gun, even the most tantalizing anomalies would be filed under unexplained, not artificial. That skepticism set the bar for every interstellar visitor to follow, and it's the lens through which we now scrutinize the next cosmic arrival. July 1, 2025. The Atlas Survey. Logs a moving point of light slicing through the constellations at more than 209,000 km per hour, fast enough to cross the Pacific in less than a minute. That registration alone sets off a chain reaction. Astronomers at Keck, Gemini, and Noir Lab scramble for confirmation. Within hours, the Minor Planet Center tags the orbit. Eccentricity over 6, inbound from deep space, no chance it belongs to our solar system. This is 3i slash Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar visitor, and its path is anything but ordinary. For the first time, the world's largest telescopes, space-based and ground, are trained on an interstellar object not for days, but for months. JWST's NIRSPEC, Hubble's Wide Field, Mars Orbiter Doppler, and radar arrays from Goldstone to Arecibo all feed into a global relay. Each instrument hunts for any deviation from Newton's laws, any sign this object might break the mold. Then, in the narrow window between September 23rd and 26th, something happens. Doppler logs from Mars orbiters show a small but consistent drop in velocity, about 0.3 kilometers per second. JWST's spectroscopic data, slotted in on an emergency override, echo the same change. Ground radar arrays, operating independently, confirm the shift. The numbers aren't random. The direction matches the object's course, not the scatter of measurement noise. Inside the Atlas operations channel, the alert comes from a postdoc. If it's breaking in empty space, something's wrong, or something's very, very right. Senior staff double-check the data, then triple-check. The anomaly holds across platforms, across continents. Arguments break out over the embargo. Some urge caution, haunted by the ghost of Oumuamua's controversy. Others demand immediate release, but the evidence is there, staring back from every screen. An interstellar traveler, in defiance of comet physics, 
slowing down as it approaches the sun. The question is no longer whether something happened, it's how and why. Physics leaves little room for ambiguity. Every comet, asteroid, or interstellar wanderer crossing the sun's domain obeys a handful of relentless forces. Solar gravity is the main driver, pulling objects inward, accelerating them as they fall toward the center of our system. Picture a comet inbound. Its speed grows, not shrinks, the closer it gets to the sun. That's the unbreakable promise of Newton's laws. But gravity isn't the only player. Sunlight itself, though gentle, pushes outward. Each photon striking a comet's surface delivers a minuscule nudge, a steady outward pressure that, over time, acts like a tailwind. This radiation pressure never slows a comet's advance. It only ever adds to its momentum, especially for objects with reflective or low-mass surfaces. Then there's the drama of outgassing. As a comet heats up, frozen gases trapped inside begin to sublimate, jetting out into space and forming those iconic tails. These jets work like thrusters, always firing away from the sun, always contributing a small but measurable kick that speeds the comet along its path. The direction may wobble, the magnitude may fluctuate, but the effect is always the same. Acceleration, not braking. No natural process known to science produces a sustained, coherent deceleration at interplanetary speeds. There is no cosmic drag strong enough to counteract the combined pull of gravity, the push of photons, and the thrust of outgassing. So when the data show an object like 3i slash Atlas slowing down, not just stalling but actively reducing its speed as it approaches the sun, every established mechanism falls away. The Laws of Motion Demand an explanation. If the brakes are real, they can't be natural. That's the puzzle. Physics itself insists we're missing a mechanism or witnessing something that rewrites the rules. So, let's examine what makes the reverse photon sail idea so captivating and so demanding. Imagine an object streaking toward the sun, not with its broadside catching the light, but with a surface polished to a near mirror finish, angled just so. In theory, sunlight itself could act as a break, each photon delivering a minuscule push in the opposite direction, draining momentum instead of adding it. This is the principle behind the so-called reverse solar sail. Harness the relentless pressure of sunlight, but turn it into drag rather than thrust. But here's where the engineering challenge grows almost insurmountable. For photon drag to deliver a sustained slowdown, especially one as precise as the 0.3 km per second drop logged by multiple instruments, 3i Atlas would need to maintain an unwavering orientation. No natural comet, battered by eons in interstellar space, should be able to hold a steady pose under the sun's glare. Tumbling, or even a slight wobble, would scatter the incoming light, turning a calculated break into random drift. Yet, the data from J, W, S, T, and ground radar point to a surface that reflects light with uncanny consistency and a rotation pattern that borders on mathematical precision. This raises a new question. What would it take to keep that alignment? On Earth, solar sails require constant attitude adjustments, nudging and pivoting against unpredictable forces. In the vacuum of interplanetary space, with no onboard thrusters detected and no visible outgassing, such control would demand either an internal mechanism or a design far beyond what nature typically assembles. The signature to watch for is clear. If 3i Atlas keeps breaking, and if its reflective surface remains steady, we're looking at a system that behaves less like a random fragment and more like a craft obeying orders. The next step is to weigh this photon sail scenario against the possibility of hidden propulsion and see which, if any, survives the evidence. Consider the possibility that 3i slash Atlas isn't relying on sunlight at all, but instead uses something hidden, an internal engine, a whisper of propulsion so faint it slips beneath the radar of our best instruments. The idea sounds bold, but it's not without precedent in human engineering. Ion drives, plasma thrusters, even electromagnetic propulsion have all been tested on spacecraft closer to home. The challenge, though, grows immense at interstellar distances. Any real engine would need to operate for decades, maybe centuries, without a break, drawing on a power source that never runs dry. So, 
Let's look for the telltale signs. If 3. I slash Atlas is firing thrusters, ionized gases, plasma, even exotic electromagnetic emissions, there should be a trace, a spectral fingerprint, or a radio burst, even if only for a moment. But so far, every sweep by JWST's spectrographs and ground-based radio arrays has come up empty. No plumes, no heat signatures, no outgassing jets. The emission limits are tight. Anything above a few milliwatts per square meter would stand out against the cold background of space, and yet nothing flares. Then comes the power paradox. To slow an object the size of a mountain by even a fraction of a kilometer per second, the energy required is staggering. Orders of magnitude more than any known battery, isotope, or solar array could deliver over interstellar time. The numbers don't add up, unless we're missing an entirely new class of physics or engineering. So, we're left with a checklist. If a hidden drive is at work, it must be both invisible and impossibly efficient, leaving no exhaust, no heat, and no radio chatter. If the deceleration continues and the silence holds, this theory grows harder to support with every passing day. That leaves one last option, perhaps the choreography of gravity itself is being exploited in ways we haven't yet imagined. Now, imagine a trajectory so precise it seems less like a cosmic accident and more like choreography. On October 3rd, 2025, 3I-Atlas sweeps past Mars at a distance that mission planners would envy, close enough for the orbiters circling the red planet to capture its passage in real time. Then, mapped out months in advance by orbital simulations, its path bends just enough to set up a rendezvous with Jupiter in March 2026. These aren't casual encounters. In the language of orbital mechanics, each flyby is a chance to steal or shed speed, to redirect momentum using the gravitational pull of a planet. Space agencies have used this trick for decades, the so-called gravity assist, to send probes to the outer solar system. But for a natural interstellar object, the odds of threading this needle are vanishingly small. Monte Carlo simulations running millions of random trajectories suggest that the likelihood of an object entering the solar system and hitting both Mars and Jupiter's gravitational spheres within such narrow windows is less than 1 in 10,000. This is where the Oberth effect enters the picture. If a spacecraft, or anything else, fires its engines at the moment of closest approach to a massive body, the energy gained is multiplied by the speed at perihelion. For 3i slash Atlas, a maneuver near Jupiter would amplify any velocity change, potentially sending it on a new course entirely. The timing is uncanny. Mission planners spend years calculating these windows for their own probes, adjusting for planetary alignments that happen only once in a generation. For an interstellar visitor to arrive just as Mars and Jupiter are optimally placed without any prior knowledge or control stretches coincidence to its breaking point. So we're left with a puzzle. Is this the universe rolling cosmic dice and coming up with a perfect sequence? Or are we watching the aftermath of a plan, a trajectory set long before our telescopes ever caught the first glint? The next checkpoints are already on the calendar. Every close approach, every velocity shift, is a test. If 3i slash Atlas takes full advantage of these planetary assists, the case for pure chance grows weaker with each maneuver. Consider its chemistry first. When the James Webb Space Telescope captured spectra from 3i slash Atlas, the results were anything but ordinary. Nearly 95% of detected volatiles were carbon dioxide, a ratio that flips the script on what we expect from comets in our own solar system, where water dominates. That much carbon dioxide hints at formation in a colder, more distant cradle, or perhaps something less natural. Then there's the dust. Instead of blasting particles away at hundreds of meters per second, Atlas releases its dust at a gentle 10 meters per second, barely more than a brisk jog. The coma, vast and luminous, holds together rather than scattering chaotically. But the real surprise comes from the object's internal rhythm. Photometric data, stitched together from JWST and ground observatories, reveal a rotation that's not just stable. It's clockwork. No wild tumbling, no random procession. The light curve repeats with mathematical precision, as if locked by design. 
Density estimates, drawn from the way dust and gas move in its envelope, suggest a structure far less dense than solid rock, possibly even hollow. Each of these clues, from the chemistry to the spin, stacks up on the scales of evidence, daring us to reconsider what nature alone can assemble. The next checkpoint, how these features hold up as Atlas nears its solar trial. Now the countdown. Titans. October 21st, 20, 2025. An invisible wall drops into place. For nearly 10 days, 3. I slash Atlas passes behind the sun from Earth's perspective, lost in the glare of superior conjunction. No telescope on the ground or in orbit can track its progress. Even Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope are forced to wait, their solar elongation limits sealing off the view. This is the blackout, the moment when the most critical maneuvers or fragmentations could play out, entirely unobserved. Then comes the razor's edge, October 29th to 31, perihelion. Atlas swings closest to the sun at 1.36 astronomical units, its speed and stress peaking as it rounds the furnace. Whatever happens in those hours, fragmentation, survival, or another velocity twist, will be hidden from direct observation. Astronomers scramble to schedule every possible window before and after, racing the blackout clock. December 19th offers a reprieve. With Earth's position finally favorable, the world's largest telescopes line up for a fresh velocity check. It's a logistical sprint, each gap in coverage a chance for the story to change without witness. In this race against physics and time, every missed hour could mean a lost answer. Three outcomes now hang in the balance, each carrying its own weight. If three, I slash Atlas breaks apart at perihelion, shattered by solar heat, leaving a trail of debris, astronomers will see it as confirmation of nature's harshest test. Fragmentation would point to a fragile structure, perhaps hollow or riddled with weaknesses, and the case for artificial engineering would fade into the background. If the object survives its sunward plunge intact, with no dramatic outgassing, the conversation shifts. A stable passage through the furnace, especially with no new velocity spikes, would push the boundaries of what we expect from natural comets and keep the technological hypothesis alive. But the most electrifying scenario is the third, a sudden, deliberate maneuver at perihelion a velocity change that defies both gravity and chance. That would be a signature no known comet has ever left behind. Every instrument, every eye in the scientific community is poised for these signatures. The next days could redraw the line between cosmic accident and cosmic intent. Unlike Oumuamua in 2017, which sped up with no visible cause, 3i slash Atlas slowed down in ways that known comet physics cannot explain. No outgassing or radiation pressure mechanism fits the data, and gravity alone would only accelerate the object near the sun. Theories from photon drag sails to precise gravity assists remain unconfirmed. Key test dates, October 29th to 31 to perihelion and December 19th velocity checks will determine if this deceleration persists or points to a mundane cause. The exact mechanism behind 3i slash Atlas's breaking event is still unknown. What is clear? For the first time, direct measurements have forced scientists to reconsider what counts as evidence for interstellar technology. The next observations may reveal if we are witnessing a new chapter in cosmic discovery or simply the limits of our current understanding.